What's going on smart people? Before this video gets started, if you like the way I end up presenting the information and you think you might want some Skype physics or math tutoring, click on the link in the description for more information. But today I'm going to be showing you how to diagonalize a matrix by constructing a unitary matrix that does the job. And this unitary matrix is going to have interesting properties such that if we take the inverse times the matrix we want to diagonalize times the regular unitary matrix, we should just get a diagonal of just its eigenvalues, just the matrix M's eigenvalues. And this is more of a claim. I haven't proved this. So if you'd like to see this relationship proven in a future video, let me know in the comments section. But the way we're going to get to this is we're just going to follow this step-by-step -step procedure, which is normally not how I do things. I normally show why this works first, but I wasn't sure if people would be interested in seeing the proof in the first place. But let's go ahead and start off by picking a matrix M that we want to diagonalize. We're going to let M equal 0, I, minus I, and 0. Uh, so the first step is to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of M. We're going to start by finding the eigenvalues. And to do that, we set up the eigenvalue problem. We're saying that M times some vector, let's call it psi, is equal to its eigenvalue times psi. We're just stretching or squishing psi by a little bit. So we can subtract this over. We get M psi minus lambda psi equals 0. Factor out our psi, so to speak. We get M minus lambda times the identity. Uh, psi equals zero. And this will only have non-trivial solutions if the determinant of n minus lambda times the identity is zero. And that's because the determinant being zero means that the matrix can't be inverted. So if we call this new matrix L, then what we're saying that if L psi equals zero, if this, does, if this determinant is zero, that means that it can't be inverted. If it could be inverted, we can multiply both sides by the inverse and then we would just get the identity here, and we'd get psi equals zero for all of these matrices. That's boring. So in order to avoid just this trivial solution, we need to set up the determinant. Okay, and that's pretty easy to do. It's just a two by two, so we get that this determinant becomes minus lambda i minus i and zero, nope, not zero, minus lambda. And that is gonna give us a lambda squared minus minus i squared, which is going to give us a minus 1, which should equal 0, which tells us that lambda equals plus or minus 1. Cool. So let's go ahead and write that up here. Lambda equals plus or minus 1. We've got two eigenvalues. Now we've got two eigenvectors to find. Cool. So we got our two eigenvalues. Next step to find our eigenvectors, we're going to write down our eigenvalue equation one more time. So we have m acting on psi is equal to lambda acting on psi, or times psi. Again, we can subtract this over. m psi minus lambda psi equals zero, which tells us m minus lambda times the identity equals zero. And we want to build a matrix representation for both of these lambdas. So if we were to say that lambda for lambda equal one, well, this just becomes we got 0 minus 1, so it's minus 1 i minus i minus 1 times our, let's say, x, y, and z components of our vector. And this is what we want to solve for. We want to find our eigenvector. Okay? I'm going to get rid of this part here because, you know, it's hard to say how many steps a, uh, it takes to find an eigenvector with all of these, like, Gaussian elimination methods. So let's go ahead and write this up here. We got minus 1 i minus i minus 1. Okay, the first step, let's go ahead and multiply row 1 by row 1 times minus 1. That'll give us a 1, a minus i, a minus i, and a minus 1. Then let's multiply row 2 times, let's do, let's do minus i. So we got a 1, a minus i, a minus 1, and an i. And then we can see that if we just add row 1 to row 2, this whole row becomes a 0. So if we do row 2 plus row 1, we get 1 minus i, 0, 0, which tells us that x minus i y equals zero, which means x equals i y, and now we're free to choose a value of x 
that will satisfy this. So if we let, or not let, let's choose x equals i, then that means that y is equal to 1. Is then equal to 1. Which tells us that our eigenvector, so let's call this, let's put a little tilde up here just to mean that we're not, it's not normalized yet, is going to equal i1. And now let's normalize this. Always normalize your vectors. So if we want to normalize this, we have to calculate the inner product and then take the square root of it and then divide this vector by that norm. So we want to find the inner product. So that's minus i1, i1. Remember, you always have to do the conjugate transpose when you take the inner product of complex vectors. So that's going to give us a 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we're dividing by the square root of this, which tells us that psi, let's call it psi 1, is equal to 1 over root 2, i1. And let's go ahead and write this up here. So psi 1 is equal to 1 over root 2, i1. Cool. Now we have one other to find. We found the eigenvector for lambda equal to 1. Now let's do it for lambda equal to minus 1. And for this, we're really just going to start the exact same procedure. Remember, it's going to be m minus lambda times the identity times psi. But we now know that lambda equals minus 1. So it's m plus uh, the identity because it's minus minus 1 times this. So let's go ahead and add the identity matrix, which is just the, just the diagonal of 1. So it's only going to affect these terms here. So it's going to give us a 1i minus i1. OK. And then let's go ahead and multiply row 2 times, let's do minus i again. So 1i, this is going to give us a minus 1 and a minus i. And there we have it again. We can just add row 1 to row 2 again row 2 plus row 1, 1, i, 0, 0. And we get that x plus i, y equals 0. x equals minus i, y. Let's go ahead and choose x equal to, so choose x equal to minus i. By the way, uh, some people get a little confused on the whole choosing a value of one of these things. What it's saying, what this whole relationship says is that for any x we can come up with, we can find a y that satisfies this eigenvalue equation. So we can choose any arbitrary, any arbitrary x or y in this case that will fix the other one. And then the whole thing that makes everything come out more or less less arbitrary is the fact that we end up normalizing our eigenvectors anyways to, to take into account the fact that you know people might choose different values of x so that's why you should always normalize your vectors so if x equals minus i then that again means that y equals one which means that y2 let's make it a tilde because it's not normalized yet is going to be minus i one and then let's normalize this. So we've got an i, a 1, a minus i, and a 1. So you can give us a, another 1 plus 1, which means we're dividing by the square root of this. So psi 2 is equal to 1 over root 2 minus i 1. Let's go ahead and plop that right up now. Great. And now we have all of the pieces of the puzzle to finally construct our unitary matrix that will diagonalize m. So we've got our eigenvalues, we've got our eigenvectors, and we've normalized our eigenvectors. The next thing to note is that for unitary matrices, the inverse of the unitary matrix is equal to its Hermitian conjugate. And this is really useful because sometimes it can be a pain in the ass to find the inverse of a matrix, but finding the Hermitian conjugate is as easy as transposing it and complex conjugating it. Now step three tells us that we can express our unitary matrix U where its columns are just going to be our normalized eigenvectors. In other words, U is just going to equal psi 1, psi 2. 
where psi 1 is just going to be, I'm going to distribute this 1 over root 2, so it's going to be an i over root 2, uh, 1 over root 2, minus i, and 1 over root 2. And in a sense, we're kind of done. This is what we set out to find, but it's always good to check your work. This should be the matrix that diagonalizes m such that the diagonal components are just the eigenvalues of m. But to check it, we want to multiply out u dagger m u and see if that's actually what we get. So let's go ahead and calculate what u dagger is. But first, let's factor out this 1 over root 2. So that's equal to 1 over root 2 i minus i uh, 1 1. And then u dagger is just going to be our complex conjugate transpose of this. It's equal to 1 over root 2. Rows become columns. I's become minus I's. So this is going to be a minus I, I, 1, 1. OK, cool. And then let's multiply this times this times this. So we want to do 1 over root 2 minus i 1 i 1 times m, which is 0 i minus i 0 times u, which is, well, u also has a factor of 1 over root 2. So this is being multiplied by all of this. So I'm just going to absorb that into this factor here by squaring root 2. So that's just going to be a 2, 1 half. It's going to be i minus i. 1, 1. And let's just do this matrix multiplication. And what we're saying is that when we do all of this, what we should get is a diagonal matrix where the components are just the eigenvalues plus and minus 1. Let's start here. So this is saying this is equal to 1 half minus i1, i1. One. 0 times i plus i times 1, that's i. 0 times minus i plus i times 1, that's another i. Minus i times i plus 0 times 1, that's going to give us a 1. Minus i times minus i, that's going to give us a minus 1. OK? And now let's carry out this matrix multiplication. That's 1 half minus i times i, that's going to give us a 1 plus 1 plus times 1, that's going to give us a 2 minus i times i, that's again going to give us a 1, minus 1, which is 0. i times i is minus 1, plus 1, 0. i times i is minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2. Distribute our 1 half, and we get that this is equal to 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So we indeed did find our unitary matrix that diagonalizes m. And that's all there is to it. So this is our unitary matrix that diagonalizes M. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see me prove this relationship here. That way it's not just me saying follow these steps to get the right answer. And I'll see you guys there.